Okay, Tammy Sue. Uh, Luther Barge, my female pup is four weeks old. Mum died after labor, oh dear. Why do mums die after labor? I'll give you an answer. We'll talk about that for a second well, before we go to this part. If you had her fixed, that's a possibility. At the same time, she had a C-section. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that answer. That's yeah. exactly right. So, that, so here's the things that can go wrong in labor. You can just get unlucky and lose a dog. I mean, for us, we've never had a dog die on the table. Not one time. But you can lose a dog. You can lose a dog because too much anesthesia was given. Right. And the dog never wakes up. Because of her weight wasn't weighed properly. Make yep. sure you, you have to question the vet about her weight when they weigh them yep. because they can give them too much. Just know what your dog weighs and say, yeah. my dog weighs 23 pounds. Well, and then, they'll weigh her too, yes. the vet. But, but just make, make sure that check. somebody didn't make a mistake. Always so. double check. Think yeah. of the what if. Yep. Yeah. So that's one reason. Too much anesthesia is one reason. Um, and then, um, you know, things just go wrong. You know, those things happen occasionally, but apparently pretty rare. Um, and then the other thing that Tammy mentioned, which is a good point, is do not, if you're going to spay the dog off this, this is the only litter she's going to have, for whatever reason, we're not having any more puppies, do not spay your dog at the C-section. Go no. back and do that because it's too much load on and a dog. And if they try to talk you into it because they've already got her open, no, you're going to lose your female. Well, you could lose your female or you yeah. could, or she could she could not produce milk or, or yeah. you know, there's all, all, all kinds, kinds of reasons. Of it's too much of a load. Look, look yeah. maybe there's emergency situations where there's a lot of bleeding going on, something like that, and then the, then the election is is that we've got to do something, and the answer is we've got to we've got to spay her. Maybe that's correct. I mean, there might be special circumstances. Never seen that for us, but all I do see this, and we made this mistake one time, by, by the way, ourselves with a little chihuahua, didn't we? Yeah. She had yeah, she had to have a C-section because she got in trouble, and then the doc we didn't know what we were doing back then, and a doc uh, did a spay, and the, and the dog died about two days later. Yeah. That was a sad day. Sad, very sad day. So back to this question though, because that wasn't the question. My female pup is four weeks old. Mum died after labor, which was sorry for you. Pups only weighs nine ounces and she's not eating for 18 hours now. Nine ounces is good, you know, if that's what she weighed. We don't know what kind of dog it is. Oh, 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 I thought it was a French bulldog. Okay. Yeah, well, it might be. Um, and see if you would come up here and tell you what to use as far as, uh, um, so here's, here's the thing. Um, if puppies need to gain weight at least half an ounce a day, if they're not, it's a warning sign that things are wrong and you have to step in. Obviously, what happens to a dog, Tammy, if he doesn't eat? Yeah, it'll be hydrated. And then what happens if he doesn't eat? It dies. It dies. It's just like you and me. We have to eat. You know, if we go out without food for, I think, a week and water for a few days, you die. With puppies, don't have any reserves at all. If puppies don't eat for 24, 36 hours, they're going to get in trouble. Problems, yeah. got problems. Tube feed. That's what you got to do, tube feed. So, if the puppy's not feeding, tube feed. If the puppy's cold, get an incubator. But first thing to do is, if a puppy's cold, get it warm and then tube feed it. Don't tube feed a cold puppy. Get a puppy warm. Put your finger in its mouth. That little feel. travel incubator saves yep. a lot of puppies. Yep. 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 And that's also sold on www dot mybreedersupply.com So Brian, Alicia, any suggestions on picking the keeper out of a litter? I heard Tammy has an eye for this, which she does. Um, and then somebody said, um, I don't, love an updated position on this as well. I know there are, there's an old one about head shape. When do you pick your keeper? Nose positioning in the conjunction with the eyes, nose axis. How do you tell will have a puppy will have a muscle? How early can you, when you have see a puppy easty westy feet? And it wows you at the beginning, you better be watching that puppy as she grows up to be six weeks old. You know, and really the real truth comes out when they're six months old. So uh, when I was born they smacked me on the <laughs> bottom and then they said throw they that tried one. To flush throw, you down the throw, throw that one back. <laughs> And you back. wouldn't go. <laughs> I hang on to the sides of the lid like this. Your head this. was too big then and it's too big now. <laughs> that's why you couldn't be flushed down the boat, James. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's too, too full of shit, too. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah oh funny. My. Yeah, yeah. Tammy does have a really good eye for this. Well, Cody does too. He does. My he does. son Cody he does. He does. taking over the business. And, and, and so here are some, so let's just have a conversation now about, uh, about this because I think it's a, it's a good one. Um, so, first off, if you know the parents, 
you have an idea about structure wise what you're going to produce yeah look the dna the color that's a separate thing and that's that's not what we're talking about we're talking specifically here i mean look structure you know there's other things that factor into this do you want a boy do you want a girl obviously and then the other ones are who's got the dna that you want and that could be varied well, by the puppies like in kids litter we had a female that i went oh that's the little boy it's right after it's born and james said nope that's a female and i went you got to be kidding me because her head was just awesome and that was little esme and it was just like holy cow yep. and i get pictures of her you know, yep. at least once every two weeks, and yes, she gorgeous. is gorgeous. gorgeous. Now my daughter wants a little year hero. Yeah. So, so, so to answer this again, though, it's not always the way you think of it. For instance, we have a puppy right now that we got from somebody else. Gorgeous little puppy, but she's developing a bit of a nose. Now I'm hoping it'll all balance out as time goes on. But what is she now? She's probably oh, four you mean months? whimsy? Whimsy? What's oh, whimsy? Yeah. Four months? Yeah. She, oh, she's older than four months. Yeah, she's older than four months. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So she's about so six months, maybe. Okay, right. And uh, she's so she's in this kind of what we call in, a teenager stage, right? Yeah. The ugly duckling stage. Her body's stage. growing in different parts, you know, and and so usually when the head widens, it will correct. But you always can use that stud to correct that Bounce also yes. help it anyway yes. for sure. Yes. And, uh, but, we have but, the studs that do that too. But it's overall structure is what you're looking for. So you can have a bigger dog that has good balance, and you can have a bigger dog a great body. or a smaller dog that doesn't have it. It's got a long body or long legs or long neck, long this. If you if you look at the litter when they're born, you will see some variation in these dogs. And generally, we like to look for that more smaller, squattier dog, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. With a flatter face. Yeah. So, so well, it's, remember what I said about Winston when he was growing up. I was going, "Oh, I'm kind of worried. I don't think I like his look." Well, look at him now. Yes. Holy cow! Right. He's a nice looking stud. Right. But you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So the next thing is, when do you make that decision? Because you've got other people who want puppies, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what we do is this: we don't take it's first come first serve. That's the way we do it. We don't take um, early deposits. Early deposits. A lot of people do, and I mean, there's lots of good reasons to do that. But but this is one of the reasons why we do it. It's first come first serve. Cody so does we, early he does. He does. He does. I mean, it works well for him. But we don't. And, and but but the point here is is that that gives us we can look at a dog and we can say, okay, that dog we're going to keep that dog, or we think we're going to keep that dog. So we then say that one's not available, and uh, and then these other dogs are, and then at some point down the road we might decide, well, for various reasons, maybe we've got another dog like it or whatever, that we are decided that we are not going to keep that dog, and it goes up, it's available, somebody wants to take the dog. So the longer you can wait on this, the better chance you have of picking out the dog that was the right one for you to keep. The longer that you leave it, the harder it is to sell that, because lots of people would like to have a puppy when it's you know, for us 10 weeks old, not when it's 15 weeks old. Yeah. So what you typically see is, if you keep a puppy and you wait till it's three or four months old, you'll have a hard time selling that puppy than it was a puppy. That's it, right? right. Anything else to add to that? Right. right, right. It's, you know, and sometimes you make a bad judgment call every sure. once in a while. No, sure. Sentimental reasons, whatever it is. Yeah. But don't kick yourself over it because yeah. You're gonna use a stud that's gonna correct some of that. Yeah, 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 so, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I don't always pick great, you know. So. Right, right. Yeah. Um, don't don't just go for DNA. Look at that structure. DNA right. is just the cherry on top, but that structure is the. Well, biggest the thing that we thing. say is, is that DNA you can build in, but structure oh, yeah. is much harder to build to build right. in. So, you know, structure is. If you yeah. got a dog that does a structure doesn't look very good, well, and you you're gonna Mando, produce some puppies that are. Mando's got nice bone structure. Ken Schweeter. Ken Schweeter says, please write a book including photos and graphs. It would be so helpful. Okay, there's my homework assignment. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you, Ken. <laughs> we're, we're retiring, so it's like... Actually, to answer that question, and this is not written in stone yet, but I think there's a very good chance that we are going to start doing some traveling around the country to major cities doing two-day seminars. that are going to cost money. Uh, but it's going to be a whole, and actually I'm partnering up with a guy from Ireland who's been doing this very successfully. And so uh, that, that's something that's, you know, it's in the works, but we're... It's in a thought. It's a thought at the moment, yeah, yeah. It's, not a, it's not a definitive no. thing. 
it might be. Jillian, one day ago. This is a great video. We're talking about problems with exotic colors in French bulldogs. It's uh, true that there are thousands of genes in an organism, organism's genome, as you have said, but there is also the concept of linkage to bear in mind. I just don't know if there's been established unwanted genes that are linked to particular traits, i.e. white coat, moral coat, etc. Well, I mean, so so the answer to this is, yeah, there are. I mean, a good example would be moral. You know, moral and immoral can produce some unwanted effects, things like deafness and... and uh, uh, and, and blindness, and the same thing goes with pies, extreme pies. You can have a linkage with uh, with deafness. So um, there are some things that uh, that are linkages uh, that are known. And of course, there's a lot more that aren't known. Um, let's see. Somebody talking about the antibiotics that helped a lot. Blah 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 blah. blah. Sangonosa looked at my video on dogs cherry eye that worked from the start with, uh, but now it's no better. Well, if you can't massage to get that that nictating membrane back into the corner of the eye, then it's vet time. Yeah, and it's just a snip. It's not a major surgery. It's a little tiny surgery. Yeah, there's a couple of... It's a, a snip. A couple of ways of doing it, but a dog... So you can either just basically... Easy a, in, easy out. Yeah, they can either put a suture in there and tie it back, which is probably the preferred way, or they can basically cut it out, which is the less preferred way. But um, it, it's uh, it's not... It's a, just, it's, it's just pulled out and not, snipped. Not very difficult. Yeah. Yep, so there we go. All right, there we go. 12 minutes. Bye, buddy. Oh, let me give my phone number. 580-799-1910 for the puppies I talked about. And then Cody's got puppies too. 806-664-0173. All right. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, that was James's number. No, Cody's right. number. 806-664-0173. No. Oh, did I say it right? Oh, okay. <laughs> that <be> yours. <laughs> Because yours ends at 7.30. She started drinking early in the morning. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.